What's up everybody? So this video is going to be my impressions of the tune and the tuning process with my Challenger. Uh, I want to give a big thanks to everybody over at Pites Performance, Alex and his entire crew. Uh, fantastic guys to work with and they're not only great with Mopars but Chevys and Fords alike. Uh, these guys have been doing this a long time. Alex is basically writing the book that people are reading from to learn how to do this stuff. So again, thanks guys, appreciate it. and It was a pleasure working with you. So let's get to the numbers and hopefully this chart here will show up on screen. This would be your pause moment right there. So the solid line is the car's first ever pass on the dyno where it made 410 horsepower, 400 foot-pounds of torque. The dotted line is going to show its best tuned pass, which was 428 horsepower and 423 uh, foot-pounds of torque. Modifications to the car, real simple. It's a Hellcat Airbox Hellcat filter with a uh, brake duct mod, and I hand blended the intake runners on the intake manifold. Basic setup, nothing too extravagant. Um, so, getting back to these numbers, though. Um, you know, 400 horsepower stock, it was averaging though once the car was on the rollers for a little bit, and this is something cars typically do, you get them on the rollers and they'll start picking up a little bit of power. It started averaging out at about 413, 414 horsepower um, and about 403 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, with the tune, that was its best pass at 428 horsepower, 423 torque, but it was averaging 425 like clockwork. So um, that 428, a bit of a hero pass, but because it was making 425 so consistently and 420 foot-pounds of torque so consistently, I'll stick with that number. I'll say 425 horsepower, 420 foot-pounds of torque on an eddy current dyno. Um, again, passes were in fourth gear loaded at 4,750 pounds. Uh, so if you guys are doing uh, dyno pulls on your cars, um, those are the numbers, or those are the, uh, the settings of the dyno, so you can compare your car to mine. Um, so what was it like doing this? Well, it was a lot of fun. I'm in the process of learning the HP tuning software. I'm already uh, relatively familiar with uh, SCT Pro, and I've been using Calicon CalEdit on Fox Bodies for a long time. So, uh, But it is new software, and there's some little uh, tips and tricks and you know roadblocks you can run into with these Mopars. Um, each year is a little bit different, so each year has to be kind of taken on its own merit. But uh, Alex has been showing me the ropes a little bit, um, and again, in tuning with this car, uh, we did run into some odd things, but you know, it's just all part of the tuning process. Um, but there you go. And also, I want to get back to those numbers too. Um, I know a lot of you guys might be uh, dynoing your cars on inertia style dynos, and I know a lot of times the correction factor from one to the other, in other words, uh, how they read horsepower. Uh, can be a little bit different. It's, they say it's about 10% uh, in favor of the inertia style dyno. So you take your Mustang dyno numbers, add 10% to them and get this, you know, like an inertia style or a dyno jet 248 style uh, number. Yeah, maybe. I, and that's even what I've been told. And I've, I've heard that over and over again. And I've been around dynos for a while. And yeah, you know, I don't know if I believe that number to be 100% accurate, but if that were the case, you know, you know, on, a, on an inertia style dyno, this car would be putting down somewhere around 460, 465 horsepower. So, yeah, I'd love for that to be true, but, you know, to be honest with you, I just, I, I don't know, maybe. But realistically, the car did pick up at the flywheel somewhere around, you know, 35 horsepower, 40 horsepower, uh, and about the same in torque with all of the modifications taken as a whole. So, yeah, maybe I can see that considering it was picking up, you know, on average, you know, a, a stock car might lay down, you know, somewhere around 400 uh, horsepower and uh, 400 foot-pounds of torque, give or take, somewhere around in there. And I'm laying down, you know, 425. Yeah, it, it might math out somehow, uh, you know, to, you know, 30 or 40 horsepower at the flywheel, which would put this thing conservatively at about 525, 530 horsepower at the flywheel, if that even means anything. And it doesn't. I mean, keep in mind that, you know, the, the power increase that it picked up uh, just with the tune was about four and a half to five percent and you now these cars can you know vary that much just from the time you started just driving down the road so what made the big difference well the big difference came with the throttle settings and with the elimination of the torque management I gotta tell you uh, the car is a bit more lively to drive to say the least 
Uh, and the big difference comes in the elimination of that torque management. For you guys that don't know what that is, uh, what happens in a lot of these modern cars, uh, these cars uh, especially uh, with automatics, is when the car goes to shift, the computer will pull back the throttle and dial back the timing and then put uh, timing and throttle back in the car as the car completes the shift. And what that does is, is it, um, in some cases and in different modes, especially with the SRT, it gives it a bit of a rocky motion as you're driving the car, kind of like, you know, if you're driving a manual and you push in the clutch and then put it in gear and give it gas. Uh, with the elimination of the torque management, that sensation goes away and the shifts are a bit quicker and a bit more uh, firm as well, uh, which basically means that uh, with a little bit more power and a little bit more uh, of a percentage in the throttle setting, give or take about five or six percent, and no more uh, traction or rather uh, uh, torque management, this thing loves to light the tires up and it will do it almost at will and it's <laughs> it's it's a bit of a learning curve but as you can see by the grin on my face it's 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 a lot of fun um now some that those are kind of the subjective feel you know, feelings of the car uh how the car feels now again it's a bit more lively it's a bit more fun to drive downshifts uh seem a bit more crisp upshifts are also more crisp and it's also allowed me to use the track mode in normal driving circumstances, which is nice too. Uh, so you get the benefits of having a bit more of a crisp throttle and uh, also be able to have the lack of the torque management and the track mode on these cars is pretty substantial. That's been tuned out of it. So I'm real happy with that. Now, objectively, uh, how does it run compared to the other car just in terms of any testing you could do? Well, uh, zero to 60, the best time I'd ever had with the mods that are on it, but without the tune was 4.3 seconds. Um, first hit with the tune, it ran at 4.2 seconds, zero to 60. And again, real slow roll on, on that throttle. Um, really can't go wide open with this thing until you hit second. And even at, at 75 or 80% throttle, it's already trying to light the tires up. So that shift into second, it, it, now with no torque management, it's really trying to light the tires up. But uh, it does make it a lot more fun to drive, that's for sure. Uh, and it did knock down that 4-2, spinning it all the way, you know, through the pull, um, at least uh, into third a little bit. Uh, and I am going to post up a, a link to that video. The only problem with that video, though, is that my dumbass left the light on on the camera, so it's glared out the dash a little bit. But I think you can still make it out, and if nothing else, and turn the volume up, man. It's, it's, it sounds nice hearing this thing going through the gears. Um... Now, I am going to try to get some track testing in with this, although I'm a little bit on the fence with running it on these uh, stock all seasons, uh, which is what I've been running uh, this entire time. Um, it's getting to the point now where it's, it, I feel like I'm really holding the car back by keeping these all seasons on the car simply because I'm really having to feather the car um, in terms of throttle application, uh, first gear, second gear, really having to watch it now with no torque management. Again, although it's a lot of fun to light those tires up, you're really not going anywhere if you're smoking the tires. So I am looking to put a tire on it, but that will be a, a subject for the next video. Um, see if I can't chip down a little bit on that 12 second ladder, see if I can sneak up on those 11s. And if it gets there, cool. If not, just as good. The car is a lot more fun to drive now. Uh, I can use all the modes equally. Uh, I don't have to worry about uh, you know, odd sensations and shifting or anything like that. Um, and you know, I just can't wipe the grin off my face. It's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, glad I went through the process. I am still learning the software, but not too much of a learning curve. Just takes a little bit of patience. And uh, hopefully you guys are doing the same with your cars too. Get out there and have a blast with them. Adios.